let us welcome our executive director, Dr. Roland Wai, for the welcome remarks of today's session. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, the GTCC Clean Air Initiative webinar series. And of course, today's webinar on more fresh air for healthy, productive and sustainable future. It's my great pleasure and honor to welcome our speaker of today, Mr. Engin Gakla, for being with us. Uh, thanks for supporting us with sharing your insight. Mr. Gagla has more than 20 years of experience in sensing and control technologies. As global marketing manager, he is a member of Siemens Infrastructure's global marketing management team in charge of air solutions and connected devices such as sensors, thermostats, and Internet of Things devices. Uh, today is our uh, third webinar as part of the GTCC Clean Air Initiative webinar series. Thanks again to all of you for joining us today. Clean air is important for the health and day-to-day -day lives of people. While air pollution is the single greatest environmental risk to human health and one of the main avoidable causes of death and disease globally. The international community acknowledges that improving air quality can enhance climate change mitigation and that climate change mitigation efforts can improve air quality. One week ago on September the 7th, uh, we and the whole international community celebrated the International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies, which has been designated by the General Assembly of the United Nations. The International Clean Air Day and Blue Skies emphasizes the need to improve air quality, including reducing air pollution, protect human health and achieve sustainable development and environmental protection. In 2021, so this year, the theme of the International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies is Healthy Air, Healthy Planet, which emphasizes the health aspect of air pollution, especially considering the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's focus is on prioritizing the need for healthy air for all, while encompassing other critical issues such as climate change, human and planetary health, as well as the sustainable development goals. The day serves as a rallying call to action to align our efforts and claim our right to clean air. And this is exactly what we, the GTCC and the, our Clean Air Initiative, uh, what we are doing here in Thailand with our initiative. Our participating companies introduce their newest technologies, products and services, raise public awareness on the need of prevention air pollution and on the importance of policies aiming at clean air. So having said that, I think uh, our initiative is very timely initiative uh, and I want to thank Mr. Gagla again for sharing his experience with us and uh, Mr. Gagla the floor is yours. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for having me here today. Um, good morning and good afternoon to everybody from Switzerland. Um, I want to share my screen first. Today uh, I want to start to remind you the building you love is over 90% air. Uh, although more than 90% uh, of a building is air, we still need more fresh air because many times indoor air quality is not better than outdoor air quality. And today I would like to talk a little bit about indoor air quality and also some improvements in indoor air quality, how it can help us to use uh, energy more wisely in the building and also how it can impact our uh, global uh, challenges. A better future is achievable. We strongly believe that. And if you look at some of data we collected for you and you see that uh, there is still a lot of work to be done. Uh, World population is expected to reach 9.7 billion uh, by 2050 and uh, urbanization housing 68.7% of the population. We still spend 90% of our time indoors and by 2050 
cooling demands in building are expected to exceed heating needs. While building use 40% of total global energy, 75% of, 75 of buildings are inefficient in terms of energy usage. And again and again, we are trying to tell you we must use energy much more wisely. The next slide. You can find many reasons to believe. Sorry. You can find many reasons to believe a better future is possible. And when considering the major trends that are shaping our business. First of all, flexible space use is becoming more popular in building industry. The second digital transformation has accelerated because of innovations in IoT, cloud and age computing. Digital transformation is not uh, offering only uh, a technological innovation, but also a brand new business culture. A multidisciplinary business culture that allows us to deliver faster, more accurate, real world data based and more realistic predictions using new mathematics and algorithms. Demand for health and safety are key market trend that we will discuss today. Sustainability is our future and it is not an option. It's a business imperative. Siemens has committed to development in six key areas, ranging from decarbonization to employability with the newly committed degree framework. This is our focus on sustainability with ambitious degree framework. After viewing some market trends, I'd like to begin today's presentation with a question. What makes a building healthy? The definition of a healthy building may differ from company to company or person to person. In 2018, Harvard University released a research that may provide a very clear answer to the question of what makes a building healthy. Researchers identified nine foundations in this study, ventilation, air quality, thermal comfort, moisture, humidity, dust, lighting and views, water quality, noise, safety and security. If you look closely, you will see that the most of the nine fundamental elements are related with air management. Managing air in a building is a matter of energy, productivity and health. As we are all well aware, Every single choice we make from sensors to actuators, from the control algorithms to communication protocol, has an effect on the energy consumption, people's health and productivity. Managing air in a building is a matter of energy, productivity and health. Now, I want to continue with another question and in here I'm I want to ask to uh, our colleagues, maybe we can ask one question to our uh, audience here or at the end of the presentation. I don't know how we can. Yeah, we could this. we could do it here. We could do it here with okay, a poll. Let's do yeah. it and we can have a view of, of uh, audience here. Going to launch a poll right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hope everybody see the poll and uh, we are looking forward to your participation. It's a multiple choice. There seems to be a little bit of delay. Okay, we have uh, some response coming in. Yep. Okay, we have reached 
70%, we are waiting for maybe a few more people and then we're gonna end the poll and share the result with the round. Okay. We are getting to 80 and I believe this is, this is it. Whoever who want to participate the poll then have already done. I'm gonna end the poll right now. Okay, let's see who people come in. Okay, the time is up. I'm gonna end the poll now and share the result with everybody. You see the uh, result yet? Yeah, air quality is one of the point for development and also lighting and views and noise. This is very, very interesting. And today I want to continue, especially for the air quality, because what are the essential components of healthy air in a building? This is the question. Somehow my computer is working slower. Yes. Okay, we see already next slide. Yeah, page 10. Okay. Demand for health and safety, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, are major market trends. After COVID-19, public awareness of air quality was at an all-time high point. And we have three primary objectives to achieve healthy air in a building. Optimal humidity and temperature, healthy level of carbon dioxide, and nearly zero VOC and PM2.5. When you see these uh, components together, you may think I'm getting into a highly technical problem, but understanding the essential elements of air quality may help us understand how to utilize energy more wisely and efficiently. That's why I want to go a little bit detailed, but it's not uh, too much. Uh, let's start quickly with optimal humidity and temperature first. Temperature and humidity are fundamental parameters that describe indoor environments, and it's something humans can feel easily. According to numerous studies, the temperature in buildings affects people performance by several mechanisms. And virus viability, also the COVID-19, this is a very critical topic, uh, is related to in the temperature and humidity in many cases and between 40 and 60% humidity is very critical for ideal human conditions. And in here, I want to say something a little bit more about our skin because our skin is the biggest organ and all day we are in relation with the air and the dry and humidity, humidity is important. And that's why it's not only a problem of virus uh, trans transmission, and also it's very important for our uh, health uh, of humidity and temperature. Likewise, indoor temperature uh, between 15 to 26 degrees Celsius, depending on the usage situation of the room and season. In most cases, uh, bedroom, corridor, kitchen, or inventory places, uh, the managing air is always temperature and humidity is always related to each other. And this relationship has an impact on energy consumption, people's health, and also building materials uh, health, like the uh, humidity in a building or moisture in a building, many times creates uh, in the long term a big problem for the building. The second target for us for healthy indoor air uh, healthy level of carbon dioxide. Each person delivers approximately eight liters of air per minute with breathing. Eight liter, if you think uh, one liter bottle, every minute, eight liter of bottle uh, we are giving back to air. And with each breath, we take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. In released air contains not only carbon dioxide, but also droplets and aerosols. 
For infected people, it may also include viruses. If you think about eight liter per minute, you can feel that it's too much. Because if two people sit in a small room in, a, uh, in 10 minutes, every person will create 80 liters. And you can see after a while later, they will start to, to breathe other people's lungs uh, air. And this is a critical point, because if there is not enough uh, ventilation, if the ventilation is poor and the place is crowded, and we can understand why the risks are increasing. And CO2 level could be used for proxy for virus concentration in multi-occupant areas, such as meeting rooms, offices, classrooms, and in many countries, uh, schools started to measure CO2 level in the classroom. And if it is a little bit higher than, in general, 900 ppm, they are opening the windows and trying to make better ventilation uh, practices. But harmful effects of CO2 for human health is not only virus or not uh, in between people, because in short term, CO2 level, if it goes up, it reduces cognitive performance. We are becoming more, uh, more headaches, drowsiness, and uh, it's not helping to work uh, in a better uh, working uh, performance. In long term, it's increased heart rate and blood pressure, inflammation, and kidney and bone problems. And that's why poor ventilation is not helping to people's health, and it's really very dangerous. And many times, some people are not asleep at night uh, if the, uh, if the uh, windows are closed, because they need more oxygen. And after a while later, they start to breathe their own uh, carbon dioxide. And that's why uh, good ventilation is an important key element to uh, fight with virus at the end. And another topic today I want to talk about nearly zero VOC and PM 2.5. Uh, bo both are harmful microscopic particles in the air and uh, we cannot see uh, with the naked eye. VOC stands for volatile organic compounds, and uh, those are chemicals that evaporate quickly and in an uh, ordinary room temperature and can easily be breathed in the, uh, in the air. The, the volatility of VOCs depends on strength of the bonds between molecules. There are over 10,000 chemicals currently defined as VOCs. And significant source of indoor VOC are uh, outgassing from building materials such as carpets, paints, or furniture, or computers many times. The COVID-19 concern has increased the need for surface cleaning in the buildings. Surface cleaning chemicals are often a source of VOC and poorly ventilated areas may cause VOC inhalation. Again, in short and long term, there are some effects uh, and it could give a bad impact on uh, our lungs, kidney, and uh, also brain. PM 2.5 is another element. Today, I want to talk about it. It is fine dust particles. It's around 2.5 micron diameter harmful particles. And it's very common. And uh, many people believe that it's an issue for uh, air pollution. But many times, uh, air pollution is a borderless issue if you, in terms of PM 2.5. Because uh, when you have PM 2.5 particles <clears throat> that cannot be removed uh, after entering the body, this is very critical because if you breathe PM 2.5 ultrafine uh, particles around 2.5 micron, you never uh, leave it back. It lives forever with your body. And it's many times it's called silent killer. And it's one of the uh, biggest uh, health issue globally. Unfortunately, the name of PM 2.5, there are maybe more than 15 different names, uh, particulate matters, uh, fine dust, ultra fine dust, or everybody calls with different 
And that's why many times uh, we could not recognize uh, the risk of PM 2.5 beta. The good news for all those elements, we have some sensors, we have some algorithms, and every day, especially uh, maybe as a result of digital transformation and because of the uh, multi-purpose, uh, multidisciplinary approach, uh, there are new things are developing in air quality and also those developments are creating some opportunities to uh, using energy wisely. In here, before we uh, finish our uh, presentation, before the uh, question and answer uh, session, I want to give an example. Um, as I uh, today, I want to tell uh, HVAC technology is uh, improving, indoor air quality sensor technologies are improving, cloud edge IoT technologies are improving new control algorithms and new regulations are coming. And all of them are creating an enormous impact on uh, global challenges. So far, I tried to provide a brief information on the four key market trends, nine foundations that make a building healthy and uh, our three main objectives for achieving healthy indoor environment. Building investment is a long-term commitment. It's critical to collaborate with a trusted partner and to adopt technology advance advancements and new norms. More significantly, it's critical to establish sustainable future with healthy, efficient building and the most efficient use of energy. There are three significant developments in, uh, in HVAC technologies. And many times we don't see uh, even here those technologies because uh, it's always in between uh, technical people. And today I want to show uh, a development in ventilation. And uh, we can see understanding the air quality, understanding the air and understanding the relation between different elements, how it could help us. In less than a decade, more fresh air with less energy, I called for this presentation. In 2010, relative humidity and temperature was the main standard applications for ventilation. In between 2010 and 2015, carbon dioxide, CO2 measurement added to uh, ventilation technologies and demand-controlled ventilation, CO2-based demand-controlled ventilation era started. And number of people also related to CO2 level. And if we can understand how many people in which place and also the level of CO2, it could give a wonderful uh, information about the, uh, we need, uh, about the need for uh, sufficient air and this CO2 measurement, just a sensor, had a big impact on this market. And that's why no overventilation, improve air quality and saving energy was possible only with adding CO2 measurement to our formulas. And in 2020, we uh, started to uh, new applications we called demand controlled ventilation with active filtering. Because if we can, if we can understand the weather conditions, uh, outdoor air conditions, uh, and if we can dynamically analyzing the outside air conditions, we can create more accurate information about the filters. You can see measuring PM 2.5 is giving us information about the filters and the information about the filters giving us information about a perfect flow because at the end filters are creating a resistance for the building. And accurate air pressure drop control and longer HEPA filter life is possible with this technology. Again, only adding some sensors and algorithms. It's not a big investment, but the results are perfect. 
The same amount of air with less energy is possible. And you can see the technological developments in IoT, in sensor technologies, in HVAC technologies, and combining all those technologies together with uh, new algorithms, existing technologies can create a big impact on energy saving. And this is just one example. Of course, we have many other examples. And as I mentioned, uh, digital transformation is creating a new business culture. It's much more faster, much more accurate. And also, it gives us a big opportunity to work in multidisciplinary working conditions. And different things are becoming together, and it creates a bigger impact. And as a last word today, I want to say, as a final word, more fresh air is your friend. Thank you very much. And here is our contact information. You can directly call me, or you can contact our uh, local colleagues in Thailand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Enkins.